Space Monkeys blasting off with Nick Odio. He's the EVP of Partnerships and Growth at Ferrum Network. A very important job because their main mission is bridging an interoperability. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, you guys. Pleasure to be here. I, I don't really know much about you. Uh, my name is Nick Odio, uh, EVP of Partnerships and Growth at Ferrum. And I've been in the space since about 2017, but I've been with Ferrum for the last year and a half. Um, heading up the the growth uh, division at the company um, as we gear up for our parachain slot. What is Ferrum Network trying to do? Yeah, man. So uh, we got started back in 2018 with the mission of creating an interoperable infrastructure. Uh, and we've kind of taken a curious route to get to where we are. And we've, uh, for the last three years, we've been primarily a uh, blockchain as a service company, creating white label staking contracts for uh, over 200 clients across uh, multiple networks in the space. Uh, we've uh, created the first iteration of uh, something we're calling interoperability 2.0 with the Ferrum Crosschain Token Bridge. Uh, it's done about 200 million in, uh, in transacted volume so far. So about to undergo a um, an upgrade to a product called MultiSwap, which is a multi-chain aggregator, and that is kind of laying the precedence for the uh, the, the mainnet, which it, we're calling our Infinity Layer mainnet, which is more than interoperability in terms of bridging assets and swapping assets across networks, but more about bridging arbitrary information, messaging, right. and data, and right. creating these multi-chain um, smart contracts and multi-chain dApps. And so that's kind of like where we started where we are, where we're headed. So when, when you talk about interoperability and cross-chain, are you talking sp specifically in the polka dot? I'm actually glad you used the term cross-chain uh, because we're, we're really trying to kind of help rewrite the narrative of right. multi-chain as opposed to cross-chain. Yeah. And that's why we're building in the .samo ecosystem because you know Gavin really wanted to take that bet against blockchain maximalism. But at the end of the day, you know the future is multi-chain. Cross-chain implies a sort of like wrapping mechanism, right? It kind of implies right. that uh, that the assets aren't maintaining their native state across networks, whereas multi-chain kind of keeps track of the native state of assets and contracts across networks. So that's, we think that's more secure and we think it's it's much more future-proof. Um, and so that's kind of what, what we're trying to uh, spin up within the .sama ecosystem. But to answer your question, we're not trying to be constrained to uh, the .sama. We're using that XCM um, as to kind of leverage what we're building so that we can become interoperable, bring networks and startups and, and dApps closer together outside of the .sama ecosystem as well, but using that oh. substrate framework to kind of build that foundation. We could, now we have a, a few projects, um, some already on the go in .sama, uh, Composable Finance, yeah. uh, Darwinia, yeah. Ice and Snow. Bridging has become a little bit of a, a naughty word, you know, and you're talking about security there. So uh, how, how are you guys dealing with like, you know, these recent security breaches when it comes to bridging technology? Yeah, so, so there's kind of a, a two-part answer there, and, and, it's a, and it's a great question because, yeah, truly bridging is kind of the jankiest piece of infrastructure in the Web3 space right now. Yeah. Instead of using this like burn and mint kind of like wrapping functionality, yeah. we're using a two-way bridge LP. Uh, so in, it, you basically, you know, deposit the tokens in the origin chain and be able to withdraw on the destination network. Now, the bridging contract never actually has uh, operational control over the token contract, which is a super scary thing. You know, when you're, we're giving these these bridging contracts so much control over the token contracts, it's yeah. like, especially if there's like upgradable mint functions and whatnot. It's like, you know, granted, like so, so far, all the exploits have been through the, the vector of just exploiting the bridge pool, right? All the tokens that are sitting on this on this bridge, right? Yeah. So we're, we're trying to take not only an architectural security stam, uh, stance, but also an operational security stance too. Uh, and so we think like the, the, the attacks could get a lot pro like progressively worse yeah. because it's not just about exploiting the, the the tokens living on that bridge pool, but also about like, what if the bridging contract, you know, gets exploited, but then they can exploit the token contract by like upgrading the mint function and just dumping tokens on the market. Like that would be a really, really bad day for crypto. I think with this current architectural approach that's being taken by so many of these, these bridging uh, protocols, like I feel like that's possible and we don't want to ever see that day. So uh, granted there are some logistical 
um, kind of barriers when you're taking this multi-chain approach rather than uh, the cross-chain approach. Projects would have to kind of like manage liquidity on both networks. But we think there's going to be a lot more of that um, than, than there there is with this like whole wrapping thing because like okay so I, I just want, no. I just want to catch up here so instead of having a, a common pool right and a bridge managing the contracts for that pool you're gonna kind of have different pools on separate chains and then you're just gonna send information basically my question cool. I guess then from that is the some of the things that I've kind of observed is like the roadblocks are becoming like now arbitraging becomes a thing because if you're Pool is different on each one. Aren't you going to deal with like the potential of one token on this chain is going to be worth a certain value over here and over here? Yeah, I mean, like, I think those arbitrage opportunities are going to kind of like even themselves out, right? Like, that's going to present an opportunity for for people to kind of play that arbitrage system, right? So, um, I, I think that's just going to encourage more economic activity and more more trading volume to kind of like narrow that. Do you think that would end up? like unintentionally causing fav favoritism on certain chains. Yeah, um, and so, you know, we've got uh, kind of liquidity provision type of approaches that we can guide these projects through as they decide to go multi-chain um, to kind of keep track of like the traction that certain networks are getting and how to manage liquidity, liquidity accordingly um, over time. Again, like there are logistical barriers to this, which is why our mainnet is going to play such an important role in like upgrading these interoperability products further. And uh, that's, you know, when we're able to create multi-chain smart contracts, multi-chain dApps, rather than just like swapping assets across networks, yeah. then we can have like multi-chain tokens. And when you can have multi-chain tokens, then that all kind of like balances itself out mm -hmm. naturally. So that's, you know, I think really going to be when we reach what we're, referring to as interoperability 2.0. Cool. Yeah. So when you talk about this mainnet here, is that mainnet going to be a parachain? It is. Okay. Yeah. And you said you're going to go for a parachain on Polkadot and Kusama. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what is the rollout of uh, launching those parachains look like? Yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got two tokens currently. We've got the FRM token and the FRMX token. Um, the FRMX token is, is going to be the token of the Kusama network, right? So that's going to be the FRMX network. Uh, that's going to be, you know, where we build fast and break things. Uh, we, we roll things out and we, we decide if they're going to be, you know, uh, pertinent for the Polkadot parachain, which is the Ferrum network. Yep. Uh, we're calling this our infinity layer mainnet because everything I just described for you, to you guys, it's not like a layer one where we're our own blockchain necessarily. We're not layer zero where it's a blockchain where blockchains can build on uh, build on top of it's not a layer two it's not a scaling solution mm. we're calling it infinity layer because it's this build once deploy everywhere mentality right, right? where you can build a smart contract on one network and deploy it across multiple networks so Faramex, uh network is going to be powered by the Faramex token we plan to roll that out first uh, and then you know kind of use that momentum to help us um, win the the more um, difficult slot with the polka dot yeah. well, what's the most attractive thing about polka dot our, um, our, our CEO, Naeem Yagana, he uh, is just, he's a huge fan of Substrate. We've kind of dived into all of the different layer zero approaches that we could possibly take, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, Polkadot was where we wanted to build. I think there's a few factors for that. I think the, um, the, the security that you're talking about with the parachain, uh, the community, like this event has been so much fun. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I really think that there's a lot of, really cool D apps being built in Polkadot. And there's so much upside to Polkadot. I feel like there's more upside to Polkadot than there is to like any other like uh, community right now. What does your team look like? So, uh, so I came on about a year and a half ago. And at that point there was like six of us and now we've scaled the team to over 35 full-time employees amazing Pretty yeah typical. yeah and i mean like you know we, we've still got 26 months of runway you know like even with this bear market you know we're generating revenue we're you yeah. know uh the, and that's kind of all uh in, in due to our blockchain as a service kind of like the, where we came from right and that was i, I just wanted to make ahead. note yeah that you said we're doing revenue and then the crowd yeah. <laughs> There's this black smile. I know, yeah. Yeah. I know, right? It's crazy. <laughs> Crypto project generating revenue. Who knew? <laughs> Dude, well, um, I, this is super awesome to have you in here telling us about interoperability 2.0. Dick, thank you for coming in, man. Thank you guys. Yeah, yeah, buddy. Really appreciate yeah. it.